Um, so there's various different hand signals. Um, you've got jazz hands in the air, like this, um, for agree. You've got jazz hands down below for disagree. Um, although we would, uh, I, we, people would say that um, if someone's making a very personal opinion, sometimes it's not nice to see a big crowd of lots of dis, uh, unhappy jazz hands if you're saying something that's quite personal. Um, you've got a technical point, a little T. A uh, technical point is something that has nothing to do with the meeting. So it's, it's not a direct response. A technical point would be, oh, there's a tree on fire behind us, maybe we should move. Um, what are the hand signals? Oh, okay. Oh, if you want to say something, stand in the air, um, and I will be making a mental list of the order. And um, you've got a direct response, but be really careful with this one because it can get like when you're in the swing of things, you can use it a lot too much. Uh, direct response is two fingers in the air, and it's for clarification. So if I said, let's go and occupy this place because it's 10 meters away, and you personally know that it's not 10 meters away, it's 50 meters away, then that's when you'd use direct response. Um, so let's do this. Where's the agenda? <laughs> the SKA is 139 cities in uh, 87 countries where people have... Oh, when you do this, it means louder. Louder. Okay. Occupy is a movement uh, which is in uh, over a thousand cities in a uh, hundred countries or more. Uh, and it's groups of people who feel disenfranchised and not listened to by the powers that be. They've decided to come together and take matters into their own hands. So that if the, the people who should be offering them a voice aren't offering them a voice, then they together will get together and give themselves a voice. This is the basics of uh, the Occupy movement. Yeah, I was just going to briefly mention that um, my feeling, sort of the underlying reason for this... Is that loud enough? Can you hear? Yeah? Alright, cool. Uh, I was just going to point out that the fundamental mechanics of our current military system are at their core anti-humanitarian, and that is where a lot of our problems are stemming. I just wanted to clear it out there. Yeah. Who's heard of the uh, fractional reserve banking system? Oh, right, that's quite a lot of people. Okay. Yeah, so who definitely hasn't heard about it ever? Quite a lot of people? Yeah, okay. Uh, we can talk about that later, though. Yeah, alright. Well, so, I think lots of people have lost their jobs. Lots of people have jobs and work very, very hard all week long and find that uh, they can just about keep a roof over their head. But they can just about keep food in the fridge. And they're having problems keeping clothes on their children, for their children for winter. They're not going to have fun paying their heating bills come, come winter. And uh, it's for these people and the people who, who, who don't have a voice, the people who haven't got a 50% pay rise last year, uh, we want to speak up for them and we want to, to have a, a create a hub here in Brighton so that people can express their ideas, people can gain support and knowledge and learn from each other and listen to each other. Uh, we want to, to, to do that in a different way from the voting as you do in a ballot box once every four years and the person you vote for ignores you. Uh, demonstrating going up and stating your opinions and then at the end of the day going home again and it gets forgotten about as the next news story comes on. If you have a presence, a permanent presence, uh, then it's a permanent message and it's uh, one that we can push forward with until it is listened to. The thousand occupied movements that are around the globe are not going anywhere in a hurry. And I think if the people here have the energy and the inclination to, we can have an occupied movement in Brighton that the people of Brighton will be very, very, very proud of. Because some of the people in Brighton, some of the organisations can't listen to us, if we come together we can make them listen by getting up off our sides, coming here and making it so.
Uh, yeah, uh, my name's John. Um, I, mean, I thought it would be worth kind of looking over the way in which the Occupy movement has developed. I mean, if you like, there's been nearly kind of two waves um, of the Occupy movement, and many of them have been very different from each other. Initially, where you had the revolutions developing in Tunisia uh, and in Egypt as well, these were the first kind of developments uh, of the Occupy movement that took place, and importantly, especially in those two examples, then you had the uh, importance of the organized working class, of people occupying their factories, of people transforming their own trade unions, in order to put onto the agenda not just their disgust at the dictatorships, at the way in which their society was run, but also the questions of basic poverty, the questions of wages, the questions of privatization, the sell-off of, uh, of their workplaces or whatever, to private companies in the endless pursuit of profit. And it's within this context, I think, that the Occupy movement needs to be, uh, needs to be understood. Because what we've seen over the years uh, is you know, the blind, endless pursuit of profit, the gambling on stock markets, on the exchange rates, on, uh, on, on government bonds, etc. And the endless pursuit uh, of that as, a, as, as an end goal. And obviously everyone knows that the banking uh, system and then drawing down, drawing in the rest of the economic system along with it has gone into a crash. But the biggest con, you know, the massive con that has taken place is that the government has then bailed out those banks and then turned to public sector workers, turned to people who rely on public services, turned to students, etc. And quite simply said to them, these are your debts, even though it was the banks that crashed the economy, even though it was them that played that role. These are your debts and you need to pay them off. And it's out of that, it's as a response to that, that you had these waves, not only of occupations, but of mass strikes, of mass demonstrations, running right the way throughout the Arab world, through North Africa, but also through Southern Europe, and now obviously uh, in America and, and Britain also. Sorry about that. Uh, just to say, and just to reiterate, I think everybody knows here that we're a, a peaceful movement. Okay, that we don't support the initiation of violence under any circumstances whatsoever. We are an accepting movement. We are uh, here to defend and look after ourselves. That's why we are here to stand up for our interests and our rights. We want to accept everybody of all denominations to listen and to speak to and so that their voice can be heard. Okay, so we've got a direct response here. So what's your name, mate? Hey. Joe. Yeah, I don't see how you can speak for all of us when we've only just sat down here about the question of, of like, violence. I don't know what you mean by initiating violence either, but like, uh, basically what I see the point of this as being about is to create a, a focal point where all people around the city who are suffering because of the austerity measures and the recession and the daily impact can meet other people and kind of be inspired and like actually all use this space to organize action of whatever kind, yeah? And like whatever you do, the state, the government, the police are not gonna just be peaceful to you just because you're being peaceful. And if you're gonna if you're being attacked then you need to you need to respond to that. So if, to have a blanket like oh we're all pacifist kind of attitude is just gonna like make this a really pointless exercise, I think. Um, I think perhaps the very 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 good point. Um, I think that we need to maybe adopt a similar principle, and obviously this is open to temperature check and stuff. A similar principle as we did at Occupy LSX where we were aware that there were very loads of different splinter groups that had different ways of doing things and different different ethos to maybe perhaps the whole camp. But uh, the conclusion that we came to was have Occupy LSX, the, the brand in a way, was gonna be a peaceful movement, but it wouldn't mean that they weren't open to people that did things in a different way. So that as a brand, Occupy Brighton is a peaceful movement, but people are open to do what they want and then be welcomed back here. It's not a blanket rule. Uh, we got a direct response here and then here. I didn't quite understand what you said. I'd just like to add one point. 
to what the uh, earlier guy said. I, I, I think we should very much think about the wars. Um, I haven't heard a lot about, you know, there's a lot of justice, we're being ripped off, the bankers are ripping us off, but let's remember, in a lot of the world, and, and Iran is going to be next, Syria is obviously coming up in the next few weeks, Iran's going to be next, uh, and, you know, I think we really, really ought to remember that we are part of a global community, and that much worse things are happening to the enemies of NATO in Libya, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, then the, even the most terrible things that are happening here have been no comparison whatsoever to the appalling crimes that are being committed in our name. And we should be aware of anybody who wants to divert us away from talking about the wars. And I'm not suggesting anybody is, but I think we should very much bear, have that very much at the top of our agenda. Uh, we've got one more direct response and then, or two more direct responses and then if it's okay with everyone perhaps we could move on and continue with the agenda and talk about the actual occupation. I think that a lot of these um, issues um, will be smoothed out in the occupation within working groups once we get going. But I'm going to take these two responses. Did you want to come up? Oh, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to, to clarify the point about uh, non-initiation of force. If you are being defended, if you are being attacked, or you are being um, assaulted, or your your freedom is being affected, by all means defend yourself, because you know that is what the entire movement here is to look after people who've been disenfranchised, not just in this country but in other countries, and sometimes horrifically so. Um, some people do prefer a, a course of direct action and that's their, 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 their choice to do so and sometimes it's a very necessary tool. I just wanted to clarify that, that's all. Hello, I just wanted to say with regard to violence and direct action, it's a contentious issue um, and was in the debate leading up to this, it was always going to be contentious. Um, I just propose that for the sake of unity we accept that non-violence as a propaganda method is an excellent tactic. I mean, this is a propaganda war that we're engaged in, and they want us to appear irresponsible. They want us to appear like we don't know what we're talking about. We're a violent rabble. We're a mob who advocate direct action and violence, and that's not... Who, even, the, even the people who advocate direct action aren't doing it because they're violent people. They're doing it to, as a reaction to defend themselves and I just think as a, as a mandate for us we, we advocate direct action and violence I don't think it's going to help I think whether, whether you whether you advocate it or not the consensus should be non-violence that's all I wanted to say respect to everybody um, I'm trying to get back to kind of a broader point here but I think we should all be united in one thing which is that we want to challenge the plutocratic oligarchic system that is called representative democracy in this and other countries because ultimately the system as it currently stands isn't accounting for the 99 percent it's quite clear to see i mean you only have to look at the number of oxbridge graduates who are on the front bench it's not that those aren't excellent institutions but they shouldn't be occupying 60 percent or so of leading government positions what about the rest of this is society here. You know, there are so many people in this country who don't go to the few schools, the 5% or so, the public schools, where they may get an excellent education, but they're not representing the whole majority. So I, I think we really need to focus on uniting with people all around the world, especially in the Middle East, on one basic goal. We want ethical governments that actually represent the majority of people in a fair way. So I would propose that now, um, after all those really good contributions, we uh, continue onwards with the agenda. Um, yeah, temper to check, temper to check. Awesome. So as we're all aware, I would assume that we're all aware, there are loads of different occupations going on in loads of different countries, loads of different cities. In England, we've got Occupy Bristol, Occupy Newcastle, Occupy Manchester. I'm probably going to miss out loads. We've also got Occupy LSX and the Finsbury Square, which is resulted as a spillover from LSX because we ran out of space for people to come and join us so we had to get another site which hopefully will happen here. Um, 
So then we move on to the obvious point of should we occupy Brighton? And I think that's going to be quite a consensus because I'm assuming that's why everyone's here. But can we do a temperature check on whether we should occupy Brighton? Has anybody got any serious objections to occupying Brighton? Is that a serious objection? Sorry? A mild objection. A mild objection. I think that's just jazz hands down below. Okay. So if it's okay with everyone, I think we're going to carry on as long as that's not a serious objection that would make you want to leave. Come on, come on. My only objection is that I don't want to generate bad press, and that's just a big worry of mine. And my other objection is, and there was a guy over at the other end who heckled, get a job. Well, I've got two jobs, and it's tough for me to have two jobs and to try and occupy at the same time. That's my only <laughs> objection. That, that is a very good point. Um, these issues all came up at Occupy LSX, and mostly they've managed to be smoothed over. So hopefully if there is an occupation, we'll manage to address all of these issues. So the next thing now that we've decided we are going to occupy is where and when. And I would perhaps take this point um, at Occupy LSX, as obviously because all of us here at Occupy LSX are very interesting people. The police are very interested in us. Um, so when talking about specifics, just bear in mind that you don't necessarily know everyone that's listening, but that's not to say that we should be paranoid and hostile or anything. Just remember that this is a very open space. So I've been having a little wander around. I've heard some really, really awesome things discussed. Um, can we maybe get one person from each of the groups, maybe the person with the notepad, because it'll be in their handwriting, um, to come up uh, behind the crates and then we'll have um, an update from each of the groups. Um, one thing that has come to light that I think perhaps there might need to be a quick discussion about, but we'll see how it feels, is the police. Um, as I've already said, we're very interesting people and the police are very interested in us. Um, and we've got our friendly neighbourhood officer over there called Neil. Um, and he's been coming on and having a chat with a couple of people, which is great. Um, obviously, and before we start talking about the police, I think it's all it's important for everyone to know that everyone here has had their own personal experiences with the police, whether positive or negative. And to just bear in mind, it's quite a sensitive issue with some people. Um, but perhaps now is the time to reach sort of some sort of camp consensus on how we're going to deal with the situation of police. Um, there are different ways of doing this. I mean, there's, there's, the, there's the main option of we're just going to ignore them. Um, there's others of we're going to fully cooperate with them, but the two can go together. Um, something that has been suggested is having a sort of police, well, a camp liaison with the police. So a group of people that feel that they're capable of doing it, that they've maybe done it before, um, and obviously this group can be as many people as you want, so don't feel that if you're not on it, like that loads of decisions are going to be reached without you. One thing that's very important to remember with the liaison with the police is the group that's doing it will not reach any decisions with the police and will not agree on any decisions with the police or disagree without there being a camp consensus. So don't feel that there's going to be a group of people off making agreements with the police and you're not going to be in on it. So can we get a temperature check on having some sort of liaison with the police? So perhaps a, a little working group um, of liaison with the police. So I think that was pretty positive. Are there any serious objections? Before I take points on it, are there any serious objections to having a liaison? I just think we should have no connection with them whatsoever and um, don't talk to them and uh, ignore them. Okay, uh, for anyone that didn't, I think everyone heard that, um, the gentleman here was saying that we shouldn't have any liaison with the police and that we should just ignore them whilst we're fully aware that this is a public space and they are allowed to wander through here, we don't necessarily have to engage in conversation with them. So if we could have a temperature check on that proposal of having nothing to do with the police and not speaking to them, not liaising with them or anything with them, can we do a temperature check on that? So down here if you disagree or up here if you agree? And can we have 
Um, another temperature check now on liaising with the police and having a specific liaison group set up. Can we have a temperature check on that? Oh, pretty. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, uh, as, as you may be aware, this this is our friendly neighborhood officer. Hello, Neil. <laughs> well, yes. Um, slight note of sarcasm there, but yeah. Um, so, we do need to be careful about obviously discussing things in front of him because he's very interested in us. Um, I think that the general consensus, and whilst it was quite split, that there was a media liaison, so perhaps a compromise of, as a general camp consensus, there's a specific liaison team that will do liaising with the police and bring anything significant that the police say back to a general assembly so that everyone can hear it but as maybe to incorporate um, other people's ideas about not talking to the police is that whilst everyone is an individual and it's up to them whether they speak to the police or not maybe try and leave liaison stuff down to the police liaison team and if, if you are an individual that would like to liaise with the police then join the police liaison team yes uh, a couple of points yeah I'd, I'd like to say um He's a human, he's doing his job, um, as are they all. Unfortunately, we live in a society that requires them. We're trying to create a society that doesn't require the police. Um, when, when you're talking with the police, I think the emphasis should be on don't say anything. If they talk to you, that's fine. But if you say anything to them, you can incriminate yourself, um, especially with the word understand. Don't say that to the police. So um, if we do have a police liaison group, let them by all means talk with us and we bring it back to, for consensus, but don't say anything to them. Uh, are there any more points? Whilst I've said already, this is going to be quite a contentious issue um, and I really would like to try and keep this brief because uh, we'd quite like to get back to setting up a camp um, and then this will become more of an issue later on, I assume. But yeah, just a couple more points and let's try and get back to things. Okay, just um, one little thing to bring up. Um, a lot of police do a lot of good. A lot of good. Uh, like all walks of life, some of them are good, some of them aren't so good. Um, one thing a police officer is allowed to do is tell you an untruth um, where he's questioning you and not be responsible for it, which is why uh, a number of uh, legal advisors, and I'm not giving you legal advice, but uh, they suggest that you don't talk to the, the police. If we have a liaison group to deal with council or police, hopefully we can develop a positive communication. Okay. Like, yeah, like, okay, he's a person, he's a human, he eats, he has a home, probably children, but police force is not humans, and he is not acting as human now, he, he's acting over commander, but, so that, that's all. Wow. Um, so Neil, our police officer, would like to say something, um, temperature check on whether Neil should be saying something. Oh, I'm gonna, okay, keep the hands going because I'm going to try and... Uh, there's quite a lot of down hands. Are there any serious, serious objections to not letting Neil say something? Uh, perhaps this would be a good time to trial our police liaison team um, and then Neil can raise his point with the police liaison and then they can bring it to the General Assembly. If a uh, temperature check on that. Okay, we've got a point here and then maybe we'll trial that. Um, I'd just like to say that we're all here. Neil, our friendly police officer, is one of us. He faces the same problems that we all have. He has as much of a right to speak, in my opinion, as any one of us. Can we, can we keep to hands? Because um, otherwise this is not going to be about forming an occupation, it's going to be about the police. Um, okay, so... If there's any serious objections, I'd like to really carry on um, and get the feedback from the groups because I think there's going to be some really interesting stuff that might get lost if we carry on with this issue. So can our police liaison team that's been really quickly set up, um, and if anyone wants to go and join that team, come over to the front over here and they can go and discuss with the police, see what Neil wants to say, and then we can bring it back. So his voice is heard, but it's heard through perhaps a more sensitive way.
So, um, can we get groups from, are there any like really, really urgent points about the police, like I'm going to leave unless we discuss this, because I'd really like to get back to camp stuff. Wicked. Okay, so have we got uh, feedback from each of the groups? If, if you are the feedback person, come up here and you'll be in a queue. Okay, so what was your name? Shana. Shana. Um, we were a little group over here of about eight people, lovely people. Um, we basically decided on right here, right now, Victoria Gardens, here. Okay. Afternoon, everyone. Yeah, we decided on this on the same thing. Um, it's Victoria Gardens, either tonight or tomorrow, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, regards to the police, I say we will deal with it as it comes. You know, we'll wait for them to try and force us out, and then we'll respond to it in kind. Well, I'm reading this for Peter down there, and we've got two pages of it, so I'll be brief. Victoria Gardens did seem to come top. There were some other suggestions, like Pavilion Gardens and the level, but this seemed to be pretty good. Apart from perhaps the traffic noise, but otherwise not bad. It's very highly visible. And we talk quite a bit about stuff like most of us in that group will probably not actually be staying here every night, um, but will want to come down and support it. And it's a good place for that. And that Lloyd's building, there'll be all these workers in there. And we're, you know, there's a lot of conversation about with the fact that we should own that because it's part of the Royal Bank of Scotland, but we have no control over it. And we can pay, you know, point it out to people. Um, there's loads of stuff. Do you want me to go through any of these, Peter, or should we just say, here now, yeah. and we'll support it? Uh, we also, we had a large group over here of maybe 15 people. Yes. Okay. And uh, we agreed, I mean, this, this was the, the only area which really seemed to tick all the boxes. We also said that ideally it would be nice to have something, even if it was symbolic or temporary, in place for tonight when there'll be so many people here for white night. Um, we didn't really come to a clear consensus, um, but a lot of us were talking about uh, trying to occupy the land outside the council office because that's where council workers who are going to be going on strike, a lot of them work. And it's a good place to outreach to them. It's also where people have some like dealings with the council often have to go. And a lot of the time like they could be amongst the poorer people in the society. So it's a good those are people we wanna reach out to. And um but we didn't so some of us wanted to just like start it there, others said like we should start here, but then quickly make like a, a satellite camp over there. People also talked about satellite camps in Churchill Square. One person from the group was still was saying like they prefer to do it by St. Peter's Church because it's the whole like church land thing. Um, and like as soon as possible, I think was a general consensus. Like it might not be possible to do it today because of like white night and whatever. But yeah. Um, just to keep it short, really, we just to keep it short. Um, we reached consensus on six items in our group. Um, Victoria Gardens being the place, now being the time. Um, we thought about planting grass after we're left, after we've left, and while we're here, in order to keep the area clean. Um, we could place things on pallets as well to stop things getting muddy and waterlogged. Um, there's an area at the Old Steen that we can expand to to have protests or stalls for a couple of hours during the days if we need to. Um, we also reached consensus in our group on not occupying private property. Yep. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, basically, uh, my, the members of my group and myself, uh, admittedly, we're not extremely familiar with Brighton. So, uh, you know, the thing is, we, uh, we've, you know, we talked about a, co a couple of places that we're, you know, vaguely familiar with. We, uh, we think, like, possibly here, if there's a gen if there's a general consensus, or like, possibly either the area over there, or, um, or there's apparently another area over there. 
I mean, which, whichever, like, you know, we're like, sort of like vaguely familiar. Um, we also think that uh, this, this general area would be a good idea because apparently there's a resource centre up the road that we can uh, that's used for printing facilities and 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 so forth. So we think that's a good idea. And uh, also the time and time and day, we're also like you know, same thing. Like we're vaguely familiar, even though the vast majority of our members can't um, can't actually occupy like all the time or even 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 on a vaguely part-time basis. Even though we can't do that. We are fully supportive with what other people want to do as well. So that's basically the consensus from my group. Thank you. Are there any more uh, groups uh, that haven't fed back yet? Oh, one more group. Yeah, um, we, we also agreed here, or, and today or tomorrow, other sort of plans for Bartholomew Square or Amex, because they're sort of useful targets. Um, this is a group that are liaising over there at the moment and their consensus was today um, Grand Pomade with um, a target area of the Amex later. Um, I'd really like to do Amex personally and all of the other corporate targets, North Street, Churchill Square and so on, but they're private property and we will likely just get arrested. Um, so. Oh, but, but we can protest and march though, we can organise actions into the private property, roaming tours, greed tours and the like, but we should pos probably be looking at a public space to occupy just for the practicality of not being moved on. Are there any more groups that need to feedback? Okay, so there were a lot of different places and times mentioned but there sort of seemed to be a general recurring theme of here and um, now um, so maybe we need to do a couple of temperature checks now um, so there's been a few issues raised about private versus public land um, so can we do a temperature check on occupying public land as opposed to private any serious objections and blocks to that? Otherwise, that's a consensus. Um, you know, s squatting is still legal, but at least a bit more. And uh, we could use the squatting laws to occupy private land and not get moved on if we argue that effectively to the cops and if we establish like a perimeter, like rope fence, put section six on it. So that is one thing to bear in mind, it's, it's only going to get colder um, and there is the opportunity of occupying buildings or using the squatting laws to our advantage which would also raise awareness of the fact that squatting is soon to be criminalised by the government. One thing that would... Sorry? <laughs> There's a building that says available for occupation right there. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I, oh, hi. I'm just, uh, I'm aware that we're probably going to get bad publicity no matter what, uh, but there is a possible concern with using the squatting laws to raise awareness that it might backfire and um, a lot of people might be more in support of making it illegal quicker to get rid of the occupation. One thing I think that we definitely need to bear in mind is that the occupation, if we decide a certain place to have it, it doesn't necessarily need to stay there forever. And it doesn't need to be the only occupation site. At LSX we ran out of space in a week. People were turning up with tents and we were saying to them, there's no more space. So we took a second site. So the first site doesn't necessarily have to stay there forever. We can move it around. So, um, for now, I think that there's been a lot of people saying Victoria Gardens and now. Um, so if we do a temperature check on occupying somewhere today. Temperature check. Any serious objections to occupying somewhere today? That's so exciting. Um, okay, so we're occupying today apparently. Um, there, there, a lot of ways of occupying. I mean, obviously, 
it may not be the best idea if everyone gets together and walks along with their pop-up tents in their kitchen together to a site. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you can do it. So you can have a march there, you can have an action there, where everyone can just meet up there at a specific time in their own little groups. Um, but So maybe we can get onto the practicalities of how we're going to go about doing it later on once we decide on a space. So there's been a lot of people that have suggested Victoria Gardens here. Um, temperature check on occupying here. Any serious objections to occupying here? This never happens. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what the other suggestions were, other places we could occupy, if someone could shout them out. Uh, temperature check on occupying pavilion gardens. Okay. Um, yep. That, that was a point um, about the police and discussing this in front of the police. Um, the, the police came over to say that they were going, I know, uh, it's a bit wishy washy, uh, they were going to say that if we have any issues with drunk people, what to occupying, then they'll help us, and some other things about issues that they help us. It was a bit, a bit vague. Did I get that right? They're not, they're, not, they're not going to impede us occupying. But this is the police line, so, you know, it's not necessarily true, just bear that in mind. Uh, we've got a point over here. I was just going to say that while I agree with the general idea of not discussing things in front of the police, they are going to notice a lot of tents swinging up <laughs> <laughs> wherever we do it and however we discuss it. So, obviously, it's going to be very difficult to actually plan an occupation. Um, Sorry, we've got, uh, we've got a hand process, if you can respect the process. Just to remind everyone, uh, to try and respect the process of the General Assemblies, it makes things move quicker. Um, so, Obviously, we do need to decide at some point, somewhere, how we're going to occupy and where we're going to do it. And if the police don't have a visible presence there, they've got ways of knowing. So I think it's going to be very, very hard to keep it entirely secret. Um, and he has now left. Um, so I think the main consensus was that we occupy here from now. Can we get Charles hands on that? Awesome. Go get your tent. Um, <laughs> Okay, so there are going to be a couple of practical issues with setting up a camp, yeah? For your own safety, there is a CCTV pointed right at this place here. Uh, for anyone to catch that, the police said that for our own safety, there's a CCTV camera pointed directly at us, so wait. <laughs> over, over there somewhere. Yes. So there's going to be practical issues with setting up a camp. We are going to need food. Yes. Okay, so Todd here would like to set up a working group about the layout of the camp and some of the practicalities. Um, so come and see Todd if you want help on that. One thing that has been raised, which is a very good point, is we need to do um, a bit of a check on how many people can say, yep, I'm going to camp tonight. And these aren't necessarily people that are going to be here full time, and, but we need to know sort of rough numbers, people that are going to be camping tonight. So can we have a little jazz hands, anyone that says they can stay tonight? Bring your friends. Tell everyone to come and camp tonight because the first night is going to be when we really need a lot of people to hold the space. Yep. Um, we need some volunteers um, to come and collect loads and loads of these pallets. And these pallets are gold dust to an occupation. 
we were like trading in them at oh, by LSX. So we need lots of these pallets because you help you tie tents to them and walkways and kitchen and stuff. Yeah. I uh, just want to remind people it's white night tonight, so not really likely anyone's going to be actually sleeping here. Tonight. Yeah, we really, really, really need to get on it with recycling. 
thing because it is ridiculous the amount of waste that camps can produce. Um, so just make sure that, that when we do get bins that they're all clearly labelled um, and maybe a recycling or well waste sanitation whatever working group is one so because at LSX the council was so amazing and this is something maybe we could do contact the council and say that we, we don't have permanent recycling because the council came down and brought us huge big recycling bins and says we will collect them for free but they have to be properly recycled and at the occupation there's an amazing woman there called Venus who headed up all the recycling crew um, they offered her a job because she was so amazing at it and the camp alone the recycling that we made has upped the whole quota of recycling for the whole of the city of london so hopefully we can do that here well, as well yeah, yeah. That's the <laughs> I, I didn't personally do it <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a coffee jar there that we've been yeah. using to put any donations in that we've never seen. <laughs> and donation spot is there for like things like we might need immediately <coughs> as they run us things like that um, and then there's an items needed list floating around somewhere it's also on Facebook and on the website and we have a hard copy as well at all times on the top that's a great idea short yeah. board yeah. 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 we need to delegate someone to do that does anyone have internet access that can do that possibly I can update Facebook Oh, can't, can't we, to, to update the chalkboards. Oh, so, I can update the chalkboards. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I was just going to say I can have get off you then. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, just say about the toilets. When the pubs are shut, there is a 24-hour night cafe around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Have we, have we talked to them yet? Haven't spoken to them yet. Maybe. So let's do that. Anyone want to do that now? Then? Okay, have yeah. a word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 24 hours. Let's do all that cafe. Yeah, it's just literally around the track of the other thing, Chris mentioned skipping and Infinity Foods closes around now so it might be useful for someone <laughs> to head over there. <laughs> yeah. so... Quick shout out, just in case anyone doesn't know what skipping is. Um, right. So supermarkets and Infinity Foods and other places, at the end of the day, um, all their food has got sell-by and use-by dates on. Sell-by date is way before the use-by date so it's still safe to eat. Uh, they chuck out all their food, so we go and get it out of their bins. Sometimes they're in skips, hence why it's called skipping. Um, it's all perfectly safe, obviously we don't get meat from there. Um, dairy products uh, to be cautious of, um, but cafes, like places like Starbucks are really good because they have the sandwiches and they have like a day shelf life, so they chuck them out. So that is skipping. So go skipping. And they have skipping keys, sorry, they've got skipping keys because sometimes the bins are blue, the blue ones with the yellow lids, sometimes they're locked. But it's a really standard key that you can get from Pound Shop. There's also electricity meters and loads of stuff, so you can go and get a skipping key from Pound Shop. Cool. Hi, so I suggest formation of three, well, two groups really. One to go skipping, um, and can we see a show of hands who wants to do that? I can take on a tour of town. Yeah, light, light on the town, lovely. And a group of people to perhaps stay up all night um, uh, on an on a alternating basis, maybe every five hours, just to make sure somebody is awake for the first few nights, so at least. Yeah, yeah. Get so I'm happy to do that. Uh, ben, you're happy to do that? Okay, anyone else? Yeah, um, sorry to keep banging on about LSX, but um, it's good because they've done a lot of the hard work for us, so we can just learn from them. Um, the Tranquility Team, well the name was debated for ages because we didn't want to call it security or anything horrible like that, but uh, the Tranquility Team, they would have people 24 hour um, rotors going around, so they'd go around in the General Assembly and if anyone was getting really angry and ranty, they'd sort that out, um, in a really nice respectful <laughs> way of course. Is that the same as the Respect Team? Yeah, yeah. Um, and awesome. they would be up at night. Um, making sure like issues with drunk people, issues with sometimes with the police, um, any issues that anyone has, um, that sort of them sort of, like policing but not as we know it. So if they're also going to be dealing with the police, then uh, they also need to be
break into working groups to sort out our immediate needs for tonight and tomorrow. Um, there are working group signs somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'll go grab them. I can just show everyone. Yeah, can I make a quick announcement before we break into working groups? Uh, me and Dirk uh, got a tent and brought it down, but unfortunately we're missing a pole, so we're currently short one tent. If anyone has a tent, we can beg, borrow, steal, barter, anything. Uh, there was a guy, there was a guy here earlier called Ray who's bringing down a tent which he's not staying in, and he's just gone to pick it up. And we have water, we have a yeah, bit of experience so. yeah. 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 yeah, I guess. I guess some of these working groups aren't really that important right at the moment, so maybe we decide together which ones to chuck away and which ones oh. to focus on right now. Yeah, forget these. Okay. What about media, uh, medical assessment? Anyone that's going skipping, can you also bring back cardboard because uh, it makes you a mattress? You mean like boxes or just card? Like, like, like boxes, well yeah. Well like, no, no, they don't need to be well formed because you're going to lay them flat and it's to sleep on instead of roll mats if you don't have it out. Works really well. That sounds wicked. Kitchen, food, and water, I think, is pretty important. Everyone agree? Yeah. So we'll take that one. Does anyone volunteer to take this and start forming a circle around them for food and water? Would it make sense? I'm not. Would it make sense for the people going skipping to be associated? Yeah, well, we can put it in the kitchen yeah. area, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Is this going to be the kitchen next? But are uh, people happy with this being the kitchen? Yeah. yeah. No, I think this? the kitchen should be over there by the fountain. Less of a fire risk. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, who thinks it should be near the fountain because it's less of a fire risk? No one really gets a crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are the benefits of having... I mean, what are the things that you need to consider about setting up? Well, uh, what, wait, drainage. I think what we should do is maybe water, so that we don't all fire. discuss all these tiny points that no one cares about in a big group. Whoever really cares about kitchen food and water goes and talks in the working group. I would say bear in mind that um, obviously things are going to develop massively. Um, as the week goes on and I think that tonight the kitchen is going to be like a bit makeshifty kitchen so I'd say that we wouldn't have to massively worry about health and safety issues tonight um, and maybe just concentrate on seeing if we can get some hot food and some cups of tea tonight um, so it's not going to be a huge undertaking to do kitchen tonight I don't think so. Does anybody here have any experience setting up kitchens or doing kitchens because it seems nobody's that keen. I'm not, I'm not keen so I don't know anything about it. There was a... Yeah, yeah. Tarpaulin. Sorry, we, um, we need tarpaulin. Um, you have two. Cool. Three. Oh, you have them here. Yeah. Three. Cool. Um, there's a recycling sign. I think we'll save that because the recycling bin is coming along. Uh, Everyone okay with that? String. <laughs> um, workshops doesn't seem no. important tonight. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, the yeah. bra. Mm -hmm. These are signs for working groups for tonight, but um, no, media. Come back to it, maybe, yeah, maybe. But if, if, we, if we get comfy, if we get media and we have time. on tight tonight. Tech and communication. To True. I'll, I'll keep is it in the middle. Legal. 
I think I mean, maybe poli if, as long as there's people in the either tranquility team or police liaison, or even if they're going to be the same group, as long as there's people that have had legal observer training um, in that group, then that would be good. But also, we are trying, I say we, some people that I know that aren't here, uh, we are trying to set up a legal training workshop at some point over the next few days to do legal training for people here. Um, but there is a, a legal observer training workshop at the Cowley Club. Uh, the 19th. 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 It's, it's, in a, it's in two, three. There's a legal observer training workshop at the Cowley in a week, two weeks. I've lost the date. Nin 19th of, uh, 19th of yeah. November. I know there's quite a few people here who have had legal observer training in the past few years. Maybe it's just put your hand up, make yourself known so everyone knows who you are. It was pretty brief, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. You can share it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Cool. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, Is anyone a first aider? I'm a first aider, but I have no material here. Yeah. Then, when we get anything on material, it's meant to be So, I guess three of you, if anyone falls over and hurts themselves, they can come around. Yeah, could we do, do another hands up on who's got any any type of first aid training? Like, you don't have to be a full-on doctor or anything. Um, okay, so that many people. And can you put your other hand up if you're also going to be staying here tonight? I think we're okay for first aid. Cool. <laughs> um, do we have a first aid kit? That is good. Okay. <laughs> I made one yesterday. I've brought some contributions. I think your man's point was good a minute ago that if the media come here we're going to have to delegate somebody yeah. to, to speak with them. But other than that... Um, it's white night. It's white night tonight. Um, and we've only just set up. I think that we can... And it's Sunday tomorrow. So I'd say that we don't need a full-on hands-up meeting. We can have one person that goes to the police station and one person that goes to the fire station. And one person that goes to the fire station. And one person that goes to the fire station. And one person that goes to the fire station. Sort of just common sense, like if media come on, if you feel confident and enough and able enough to talk to them, then talk to them. Just make sure that your views are going to be in so, somewhat representing the camp. You don't say anything too controversial or out there, um, and then set it up on Monday. And if you don't want to talk to them, you don't have to. Or declare yourself an individual. I think what might make sense, and I think this has been done before, is combine uh, combine media with tech and also with outreach, which I think is really important. And I don't know if that was mentioned, so maybe that could be like because I think that's the most important thing to do in the next few days, like flyer and everything.